Hey guys and gals, how we doing? It's me, Joe Sayers, back here for the Music Factory Studios. Hey, I'm back here in our door, uh, having a little fun, just trying some stuff out. Now, to be honest, I'm a Logic guy, and I've used Logic for forever, and Pro Tools, and more of the mainstream DAWs. Played around with Harrison Mixbus a little bit, but never really seriously did any mixing in it, or, you know, used it on a daily basis as my daily driver. So I'm trying out our door here and it's interesting. It works perfectly fine as long as you set up Jack correctly. Okay. Now, as you can see here, I'm going to open Jack. Jack is the professional audio routing system, kind of like ASIO on windows or core audio on a Mac. And all you have to do is set up jack correctly install the qjack control app which is what this is okay and our door when you start our door will automatically route everything correctly for you now the audio interface i'm using has six or 18 audio inputs and 18 audio outputs it sets all that up inside of our door so you don't have to do any of that all you have to do is go into the settings or setup open up QJack control choose your interface okay I'm using a Behringer X18 is what I'm using okay don't choose USB audio choose the one so like if you see it here and it says uh, 2i2 and then another one says USB audio 2i2 don't use the USB audio one just use the one that says like 2i2 as you can see I've chosen the one that says just x18 slash xr18 not the one that says USB audio okay just make sure you do that set your sample rate to what you want it I would recommend 48k frames and periods leave those at default okay and then push start now sometimes sometimes you will get an error if you do just reopen the setup You've probably chosen the wrong hardware audio interface. Now, Jack will take exclusive control of your computer's audio. So if you open up a web browser and try to watch a YouTube video, you won't get any sound. Now, there is a workaround for that, but it only really works for me in Ubuntu Studio. It's called Studio Controls, and uh, Studio Controls here on Arch just doesn't work. I'm on Garuda, Linux and there was an update to studio controls and i still can't get it to work correctly with arch it did about a year ago the last time i tried to uh, set it up so if you're really interested in audio i would suggest for now grab any of the ubuntu's that you like you don't have to use ubuntu studio with kde you can use regular ubuntu or ubuntu budgie or zubuntu or even lubuntu the lxqt version and then install the ubuntu studio package uh binary and it'll let you choose the the apps you want so you don't have to install everything so like if you don't use gimp you don't have to install gimp or if you don't use Caden Live, you, you don't have to install Caden Live. But it will install Studio Controls. I suggest this for any Ubuntu user that uses an audio interface. Even if you're not into Pro Audio, just get Studio Controls and set it up. And then you have Jack is always connected. Pulse Audio can run through it. You can open up a web browser while having our door open or anything. And you don't have any loss of audio anywhere. So even though Jack is going to be exclusive inside of our door, you can still go to your web browser like Firefox or Vivaldi or whatever, and it work perfectly fine. So that is an option, okay? Now, what I did here is I basically sat down and recorded some drums just for fun. And uh, as you can see here... <coughs> You can probably hear those, but <laughs> uh, they're not going to sound good coming over a microphone that I'm talking to. I'm actually recording this over a capture card into Mac OS through OBS. So it's, it is what it is, but it sounds 
really, really good. I'm really, really surprised at how well it all turned out. So I can't complain at all with our door. It sounds good. It does a good job. I didn't have any issues whatsoever with our door or any of the, the setup in Garuda Linux. The only downfall is I can't use studio controls. So if I've got our door open, it has exclusive control of the audio. So, you know, that's one of the pitfalls. But uh, the Ubuntu Studio Studio Controls works perfectly fine on Ubuntu, and it will make a huge difference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe this drive pretty much and install probably either Ubuntu Budgie or regular Ubuntu. I personally don't like KDE, not because it's not a nice desktop environment, but gosh, it takes me forever to set it up. I don't know what it is, but it just it takes me forever to set KDE up the way I want it. And I just, I, I'm not particular to it. I like GNOME. It, you know, it works. Um, but I think I'll probably go with like Ubuntu Budgie or maybe Zubuntu. It just depends. So, but I'm working here in Ardor and I wanted to show you a couple things. So I was asked a few questions about plugins. Here are the CAF Audio plugins. They work perfectly fine. Okay. I've got uh, an EQ and a gate here, and I've got those set up. They're working exactly as I would want them to. I've got uh, a gate, an exciter, and I hadn't really taken the time to play around with the any of these plugins. And I'm pretty, I'm pretty stoked at how good they are. So the CAF audio plugins are, are really, really, really good. And I can't say enough good things about them. Um, there's also a set of reverbs that I found called Dragonfly. And I had heard about these before. And I just hadn't used them. And man, they sound just wonderful. I mean, I can't say enough good things about them. There's a early reflections, a plate, a room, and a hall. And they've got nice little presets here for small, medium, large, hall, and effects. And, you know, you can adjust it how you see fit. Works really good. I tried the built-in ACQ. It worked fine. Tried the built-in ACE compressor. It's nice. It's a nice, clean compressor. Um, I mostly use, use the uh, CAF Audio plugins just to see what, uh, what those were like. And I'm really digging those. Those are awesome. Um, can't say enough good things about them. The compressor sounds good. Everything's really, really good in the CAF Audio lineup. So there's a lot of plugins here. You've got Analyzer, Bass Enhancer, uh, Delay Compensation, uh, a Bit Crusher, Deesser, and Emphasis. I'm not even sure what that is. Oh, okay. That's a, an Emphasis and De-Emphasis curve for like... Uh, you could do that with vinyl or there used to be uh, an emphasis and de-emphasis curve for digital and we stopped using that in like the mid 90s for some reason i think the loudness wars kind of caused that there is also let's see here what else do we have um there is an exciter 12 band eq 30 band eq 5 band eq and the 8 band eq filters um, some instruments, a flanger, gate, a Haas stereo enhancer, limiter, compressors, uh, multi-chorus, multi-spread, um, multi-band compressor and a multi-band enhancer, a multi-band gate, and a multi-band limiter, phaser, a uh, pitch shifter. I don't know what a pulser is. What is a pulser? Uh, I'll have to check that out. I'm not really sure what that is, to be honest with you. Okay. Um, let's see. There is also a uh, a reverb, a reverse delay, a ring modulator, rotary speakers, a saturator, um, tape simulator, stereo tools, sidechain compression, sidechain gate, sidechain limiting, a uh, vintage delay, a vinyl plug-in, a vocoder, a wavetable synth, I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on and on. <laughs> That's awesome. And these are quality plugins. These aren't just some random pretty gooey on top of some, you know, DSP cookbook stuff. These are really high quality effects. 
And I had always heard that. And I had played around with them a little bit in standalone mode with a microphone a few times just to see if I liked them. And from what I played with then, I really liked them. But using them here in our door on a real simple, just me sitting down, banging around on some drums, um, they're awesome. I mean, they're really, really, really good tools. And I can't say enough good things about them. Our door, by the way, is just rock solid for me inside of uh, Garuda Linux. Can't say enough good things about that. You know, even on GNOME 40, which is what I'm on, it uh, works really, really well. Um, I basically put up four mics, kick, snare, two toms, and a mono overhead just to see what, uh, what I would get. And I didn't do any EQ on the way in. I just plugged them directly into this X18 and, uh, you know, just to see what I could get. I'm more of a guy that likes to use, you know, my Soundcraft MH2 or whatever analog console I've got going on in the studio. And I like to uh, EQ on the way in, compress, and just get it done. That way I don't have to do it a lot later. Because I'm a, I'm, I'm what in the South we call a fiddler. I like to uh, uh, play around with effects too much. So if I can capture it really well on the way in and I don't have to do a whole lot during the mix... I usually end up with a better mix all around. That's just me. Some people have a harder time doing it that way. So it just depends on your workflow and how you've, you know, learned and, and grew up doing these things. But as far as an audio editor, man, our door is so much more powerful than, than Audacity or the other options. I just can't say enough good things about it. It sounds good. It it does a good job as far as uh, recording correctly. I didn't have any kind of you know weird issues with our door or any of the you know any of the plugins. I had no crashes, which is kind of kind of a good thing. You know, when uh, you're not used to a uh, DAW, you're always uh, in fear that it may you know have some crashing issues or something of that nature but uh as you can see everything recorded perfectly fine and it worked exactly how i expected it to and it's this record window is really really cool i really like how that that works and you know if if there was any downside i would say there's a few workflow things that could be sped up but other than that man this is a good workstation this is the quad this is not some open source software that's kind of eh, it's okay and it's a sort of replacement for this or that no this is as powerful as any daw on the market it doesn't have all the features that some other daws have like say logic or uh you know ableton or something with uh, virtual instruments but you know that's just the nature of, of Linux in itself. There's not as much stuff out there, you know, but there is tons of good stuff that if you use our door as your recording software, you have no excuse whatsoever as to why your recording isn't as good as anyone else. You can't say, well, I recorded in our door and it's, you know, I didn't have all the options you have on like Windows or Mac. And no, it's perfectly fine you could make a hit record on our door uh, honestly you know and it's it's just a workflow thing setting up jack isn't really intuitive at all <laughs> to be honest with you and uh it's not as easy as mac os when it comes to just setting up an audio interface but neither is windows by the way okay so in windows you have to go find the driver and it has to be an asio driver for low latency recording well see on a mac and this is what I wish Linux would go to with Pipewire. So on Mac OS, you have this thing called Core Audio. And on Core Audio, basically Apple makes a driver and tells all the audio interface makers like, hey, if you want it to work on Mac OS, here's the driver, make it work with that. And so it, everything is plug and play. There are very few audio interfaces that require their own driver, okay? Most of them that do require their own driver are DSP based so audio interfaces like Universal Audio Apogee and some of those 
more DSP focused audio interfaces have that type of, of, of issue. But other than that, man, Linux is really no different than Microsoft Windows when it comes to setting up audio. You know, you have to use ASIO on Windows and on Linux, the workflow is Jack. So you don't have to go hunt a driver online. You just have to set up QJack control. So to install QJack control, okay, you just go to your terminal and type in QJack CTL is what it would be. So on say, oh, uh, Ubuntu, <laughs> you would have a uh, sudo apt install QJack CTL. On Arch, it would be sudo pacman dash capital S QJack CTL, you know, and so on and so forth. Fedora, same way. There's also an app image of, of the uh, QJack control. You have to install Jack to get it to work uh, through, you know, your package manager or whatever, but it's included in all of those. So there's no real big deal when it comes to that. All you'd have to do is open your your software center or whatever it's called and just type in Jack and you'll start seeing all of the options for Jack. So, I mean, there's bukus and bukus of, of things built for Jack. There are plugins. Here's the CAF Audio plugins. Um, you know, here's some other plugins that I haven't installed. There's a pipe wire set up for Jack. I, I haven't seen any information on how pipe wire works with Jack or anything of that nature. So I can't really speak on how it works with Jack or, or, or anything of that nature. That's one pitfall of, of open sources. Awesome things will get built and no one explains to the, the normies like myself how it works. So Jack, take Jack for example. When I first wanted to record audio with an audio interface on a Linux system to do some of the first videos I did, I asked around some of the guys who do Linux videos and they're like, well, I just recorded, you know, and they had all these crazy workarounds. <laughs> like I plug the output of my microphone into this other machine and record it. And then I add it later in and Caden live and just all these nutty workflows. And I'm like, there's gotta be another way. Cause there's our door there, you know, which is a professional digital audio workstation. There has to be a way to get audio from a to B. And then I found out about Jack and I experimented around with QJack control after finding a few videos that showed, you know, Jack as the default server. And I just learned my way around Jack. And, but there wasn't really any tutorials. It was more or less just experiment till you figure it out. Well, that's not the best way to do things sometimes. Sometimes it really helps when, you know, the designers of an application go, hey, I built this awesome thing. Let me show you how to set it up. But, hey, rant over. I'll let that go. But if you build an awesome Linux app, especially for more um, smaller, or if you build an app for like a small user base, such as Pro Audio on Linux, make a YouTube video and a YouTube channel and just show how it works you don't have to speak you can put a you know a text editor up and type how to do things you know or however you want to do it or if you have an awesome pro audio app and you're uncomfortable with making a video get in touch with me i'm on twitter i'm on you know youtube shout at me in your in my comments and say hey i've got this awesome thing it's you know let's just say somebody makes a, a q jack control for pipe wire or something i mean i don't even know if that's possible but if you've got that, let me know. We'll talk. You can tell me how it works. Explain it to me, and I'll make a video about it. Okay? But uh, just it, sometimes, man, things get lost in how it's done. It should have been the day that Audacity was had came out into the public that they were pretty much spyware. The Ardor community should have been like, hey, look, wait, over here, we've got this awesome application 
that is 10 times or a thousand times more powerful than Audacity, use our app, our door. It's a professional app, not a toy audio editor like Audacity. Now, I know some people like Audacity and they really enjoy using it and they've learned how to use it. And our door is going to seem like a very complicated application, but it's really not, okay? Look, if I can learn to edit videos in Caden Live, five years ago, I didn't know how to do anything but screen record. <laughs> I didn't know how to edit a video or anything, okay? And I sat down and I grabbed like two or three different video editors. One was Caden Live. One was iMovie on Mac OS. I also grabbed uh, an, a video editor called Wondershare's Filmora and a couple others. And I just learned how to use them. You know, I didn't like make videos and post them like awful looking edits and things of that nature. But what I did was I learned my way around, which is a good thing. And now I can edit videos with no issues whatsoever. But I'm going to be doing some more videos on our door and show you how everything works and uh, getting you set up to uh, work with our door. But my first tests, everything has turned out awesome. But I am going to switch to Ubuntu Studio or not, you know, one of the Ubuntu based distributions just so I can use studio controls. And I think that will help a lot of the uh, music people who may want to switch to Linux. And it makes it so much easier for them. So nothing's really going to change except the OS. <laughs> but uh, we're going to explore our door in more detail. And hopefully I'll be able to grab the audio through Jack and get it into the videos for the next time. All right, guys and gals, I'm going to jump off here. And we'll see you next time. Since you're already here on YouTube, give me a thumbs up if you don't mind. And check out one of these videos on your screen. All right, guys and gals, we'll see you next time. Have a great day, y'all.